What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So in addition to all of the iOS 13 news and the Mac Pro reveal, Apple debuted the newest version of macOS at their WWDC keynote this week. This is macOS 10.15 and they're calling it Catalina. And in this video, I'll be going over some of the biggest changes and updates you can expect to see with Catalina when it launches on your Mac later this year. So first things first, let's talk about which Macs will get the Catalina update. Most of Apple's computer lineup from 2012 and later should support this update, and nearly all the devices that currently have Mojave will be able to update to Catalina. The only devices I know of that drop support are the mid-2010 and mid-2012 Mac Pros, which will only receive Mojave security updates from now on. Mac OS Catalina is in beta right now for developers only, and you can expect to see the update on your computer sometime in the fall. This is the desktop for Mac OS Catalina, and right off the bat you'll notice that not a whole lot has changed. The user interface remains nearly the same, and really the main updates have have to do with a number of the default apps, which we'll of course go over in just a minute. I do want to take just a second to show you the new default wallpaper, of course, because I know people are always interested in that. It features an aerial shot of Santa Catalina Island in Southern California, and just like with Mojave, you'll also have a dark mode wallpaper that can be enabled or changed automatically based on the time of day. And if you're interested in just getting this new wallpaper, I'll have a link down below in the video description for you guys. So we'll go through some of the updates to system preferences first, and one thing you'll notice right away that's different is your iCloud account information listed front and center. On the new Apple accounts page, there is a little bit of a bug here on my computer since this is beta software, but you obviously have all of your iCloud account settings and information listed here, as well as all the devices that are logged into this account, all in one place and all nicely organized. What you won't find in this Apple account page though is any of your Find My iPhone or Find My Mac information, and that's because it's now actually its own separate app just like it is on the iPhone in iOS 13. The app, which is appropriately just called Find My, lists all your different devices that are associated with your iCloud account, as well as any of the friends you're currently sharing your location with. And of course, this also eliminates the need for a separate Find My Friends app as well. Like I mentioned, this Find My app will look the same on your iPhone and iPad running iOS 13. And across the board, Apple has also improved the Find My Device functionality as well. So now if your MacBook is asleep, for example, rather than relying on an internet connection, you can now find lost missing or stolen devices, even if they're offline, using a Bluetooth beacon that gets shared securely with other Apple devices nearby. Apple also expanded activation lock to Macs running Catalina as well, so any lost or stolen Macs won't be able to be reused again even if the computer is wiped, unless the original iCloud account associated with it is removed. Also in system preferences, Catalina now supports screen time, and this allows you to monitor your daily usage and limit your computer time if you choose to do so. This is something we saw on iOS, of course, and it will sync across multiple devices. But overall, the features and functionality are basically the same here, so you can get an overview of how long you've been using your Mac, app usage, schedule a downtime or any limits, and so on. And you can even specify which accounts have these limitations if multiple users have access to one computer. During their keynote, Apple spent a good chunk of time demoing their new accessibility options in Catalina, and one of those is a new dictation feature. When enabled, dictation allows you to have control over your computer using your voice. So for example, you could say, open Safari, and your Mac will launch Safari. When you say the command, show numbers, each clickable item on the screen will be assigned a number, and saying that number will click that link. So on the screen here in Safari, saying 13 opens up YouTube. The commands with dictation are pretty specific here. It isn't exactly like Siri, where you can be a little more free to have a conversation. You need to be very specific and direct. And I haven't found like a list of all the commands yet, but that would be something that's super helpful in getting the most out of dictation. One of the biggest changes to Mac OS Catalina actually has to do with Apple's decision to officially discontinue iTunes. In Catalina, you'll now see separate apps for managing all of your content, music, podcasts, and Apple TV. The music app, coupled with an Apple Music subscription, is now the main hub for managing libraries, downloading new content, and purchasing songs through the iTunes store. So in a way, the music app on Catalina is sort of like a combination Apple Music hub with the old iTunes store thrown in there. One important thing to note here though, is that with Catalina, the separate new music app is not what you'll use as the tool to manage content on your iPhone. When you plug in your iPhone, the music app just displays the songs that you have stored there, but this is no longer what you'll use to sync, 
backup, restore, or manage your device. Instead, you'll now have to use Finder. When you plug in your iPhone to your Mac under Locations, your phone will be listed from here, and you can see you have this sort of old iTunes looking sync page now. You can manage all the content that's on your iPhone from music to movies to photos and files, and this is also where you'll update, restore, and back up your phone as well. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what about Windows computers? And as far as I know from what I've read online, while iTunes is being discontinued on the Mac, iTunes will still continue to exist on Windows. So if you're on a Windows computer, you shouldn't see any different of an experience. Podcasts is its own separate app now as well, with a pretty straightforward setup. Obviously, you have access to all the podcasts you listen to on a regular basis, any episodes you've downloaded, and you can discover the newest ones as well. The only other thing Apple mentioned on stage was an update to how you can search for podcasts. Overall, they worked on delivering better results from search terms, so finding specific episodes or podcasts should be a little easier. And the Apple TV app will now be the main hub for shows and movies, so you can watch any content you own, any of the Apple TV channels, and organize your library of stuff as well. The interface is pretty similar to the actual Apple TV, and once again, it's pretty straightforward, just as its own separate standalone app now for managing all this content. Just like with iOS 13 on the iPhone, the Photos app on Mac has gotten a little bit of a refresh. Managing and organizing all your photos and videos should be a bit easier, but beyond that, you'll also find more editing options built right into the Photos app. Now, this isn't as robust as some of the more professional photo editing software out there, obviously, but Apple is once again just trying to offer more in-app tools for the average Mac user to edit their photos and videos. Another app that gets just a slight refresh is Notes. The biggest change is how your notes are displayed, so you get this sort of grid view now, but besides that, you'll see many of the same functions and options, and it really shouldn't be too different of an experience if you're already familiar with it. One app that sees a major overhaul is Reminders, and if you've already seen how it looks on iOS 13 on the iPhone, you'll notice it looks pretty similar here on the Mac. The entire app has been redesigned, so it should be even easier to create, manage, and organize reminders that sync across all of your Apple devices. I personally didn't use reminders in the past because the app itself is not the best, but with the refresh here on Catalina and iOS 13, I think Apple did a great job in making it way more straightforward and user-friendly. The only other big new addition that will come with Mac OS Catalina is what Apple calls Sidecar, and this is a feature that lets you view and interact with your Mac using your iPad. With Sidecar, your iPad transforms into a true second display synced to your computer that you can interact with. It isn't like a mirrored display or like a view only display, it's a full extension of your Mac and you can use your iPad to control your computer. The idea here is that if you have certain Mac only programs that maybe you might want to use with the iPad, like drawing apps for example, you can now do that. It's very much like controlling your computer with your iPad, and while it isn't the smoothest experience right now, I think it's a pretty interesting new feature. One last thing to mention, Apple also talked about what was initially leaked as Project Marzipan, but what's now called Catalyst. And basically what this is, is that with macOS Catalina, developers can now easily port iPad and iOS apps to the Mac. So while companies in the past had to have dedicated teams of developers creating apps for all of Apple's different platforms, it should now be easier than ever to have apps that work seamlessly across the entire Apple ecosystem. The popular iOS racing app Asphalt 9, for example, will launch this fall on the Mac, and Twitter is coming to the Mac as well. So with Catalina, we should see even more apps being ported between Mac and mobile devices. So there you go, those are all of the big changes and updates coming to macOS Catalina when it launches later this fall. If I happen to miss anything important, definitely let me know down in the comments, of course, and let me know what your favorite new feature with macOS Catalina is as well. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.